five things that I still desperately want for Steam input, which, I mean, obvious that directly relates to Steam controller, but that's going to also impact every other controller that the St that Steam input can use, which to me is really, I see that as the success. The Steam controller came out, we love it. It didn't really catch on, didn't sell great, but what caught on was Steam input, and they opened that up to other controllers, and immediately the floodgates were open. More people use other controllers than use Steam controllers. So I really wanted to focus specifically on things that every controller using Steam input would benefit from this, and I have been wanting these features to come for a very long time, so all right, enough rambling. Number one, pressure ranged activators. Now this would apply to the triggers and sticks. So what I'm talking about is what I would like. Well, I guess mainly how I envision this would be, I mainly want it for the pad because this has always been a frustration. Let's get rid of that. This has always been a frustration for me. This, has some, this was something that I could do in XPatter, what, six, seven years ago? I mean, I was doing XPatter tutorials and profiles before Steam Controller came out. What you could do, like, we're able to do this outer ring binding. And we can invert that so we can have, you know, a saucer in the middle or a flange on the edge. Uh, let's switch over to, just to show it. Like, you put sprint on the outer edge, and then you have, you know, that circle on the edge is activating your sprint. And you can invert it and invert it so you have, you know, something on the inner edge that's act like a, a slow walk. I want both. I want, if I'm pushing this left pad or a stick, that's what I'm getting at, this would apply to other controllers. If I'm pushing it within 20%, zero to 20% is walk, 21% to... 89% is normal sprint, like normal jog. 90% to 100%, did I say 89? Yeah, numbers. 90% to 100 would be the sprint. Like you could gauge it in ranges and that would also apply to the triggers. So I could say, you know, if it's a, if I'm in a driving game, you know, I could put squeeze the trigger up to, let's just stick with the same, like up to 20% is, you know, slow forward, like first gear. 21% to 89% is the normal, you know, analog range. 90% to 100 is analog full range plus a boost. It would open up so many more possibilities, and I feel like that could be applied to the pads, triggers and sticks so it would open up so much more and you could stack things you, know, you wouldn't really be limited to just one I mean ultimately I'm asking for two but really you should be able to do it you know <laughs> one percent ranges up to a hundred but even if you could just get two holy balls that would be amazing number two would be better timing for macros so right now you can kind of do this through you know, you have a regular press, fire start, nothing. Add another regular press. Be that. Fire start, you know, and then kind of build that up. But it's not totally consistent. I want more control over the timing. Let me be able to easily put in a number. Like, not have to keep playing with sliders. Which, I mean, you can kind of see the number it's not doing it right now because i'm on it's acting a little fussy right now because i'm i'm running glosk on my desktop just so i could show you my number three i'm not i'm not there yet but normally like you can hover your mouse here and see a number but still it's clunky just let me input a number give me a text box that i can type in a number not have to build up a giant string of these huge boxes that's, I mean, that's, uh, ugh, that's, I'm going to, I'm going to tie this into a, another thing too. <laughs> Just general quality of life improvements. Cause yeah, this is like, these are gigantic buttons. Most of us are not configuring this from our TV. We're sitting at our computer, but yeah, even just to the better timing of these macros, 
give me a whole different activator that just says macro, which would kind of be like, you know, here where we toggle the multi button, where you could click a bunch of things and you click a bunch of things into one activator, but let me give those a timing. So I could say specifically, I want you to do start first, wait 0.2 seconds, do Q, hold Q a little bit longer, you know, let, just give us more complexity and flexibility to what we're doing in there. So that one's that one's a little clunky for me to even uh, explain, but <laughs> that's that's always been a frustration coming from XPatter. That stuff was way easier in XPatter. I could just click on each thing and give it the numbers that I wanted and build macros much easier. Number three, icons. A lot of people probably don't care, don't use this very much, but I use radial menus often. Here, you know, if you don't put any if you don't assign an icon, you just get dull, boring, gray circle with a very small little notifier of what what that is bound to. Which is useful, but looks like crap. You have icons, but even that is kind of limited to what you can do. This one would be super simple, too. Just give us more basic icons. Like, you know, these are ones I have imported, but... I can't share profiles like this because it's a pain in the ass for other people to import the, the icons. They have to download them from a separate place. This would be like a four second fix on their end. Just give us alphanumeric icons. If we just want to bind, give us you know an icon for every keyboard binding. It shouldn't be that difficult. <laughs> it shouldn't, it, just the freaking numbers. That's one that like, I've been preaching that for years. I don't understand why they don't just add in numbers. It'd be so simple. And it would make it so much easier because a lot of games that I'm making profiles for, I'm binding in, you know, one, two, three, four, like whatever. And those will have multiple uses. Like in Star Citizen, one, I think that's your pistol if you're on foot. But if you're in a ship, it's a targeting button. I can't easily make an icon for that like just just let me have it be a number and have it look decent and even just piggybacking off of that like give me more control over this like what if i don't really want that circle in the background let me get rid of that maybe i want this center one to be larger when it's only a six button radial the only way you can currently do that is to add more buttons around it than the central one gets larger let me scale those up. That, sh it, that shouldn't be that difficult. Maybe let me change the shape of them. In a touch menu, it can be a square. But in the radial, it has to be a circle. But why? Why couldn't it just be like a pie shape or a square on a circular radial menu? You know, like just give us a little bit more control and flexibility over what they look like. So, okay, that's number three. <laughs> I'm, st I'm getting in ramble mode. I'm, I'm losing track. So, all right, number four. Extend support to mouse and keyboard. Now, this is one I have no idea how involved that would be, but I can see a lot of good uses for it. Like, for instance, a lot of people don't have a full-size keyboard. So if you would just let them make their own bindings for games, that could be really powerful. Like, if you wanted to switch things around and make your own modifiers, like holding alt, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 would be number pad 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or, you know, insert home. Like, I know most compact keyboards have function keys, but still, I could see this being really useful, and I've seen other people asking for this. And then you could apply, like, for certain games that don't let you change around, you know, mouse sensitivities to how you want, you could do it through Steam, or even, uh, like, I've, I've played games before with my mouse, like, I don't have a fancy gaming mouse, I don't have side buttons on my mouse, so if a game has something hard-coded to a side button, I'm pretty much shit out of luck, but if there was a way for me to rebind that to something else, through a little Steam profile, that could be pretty freaking cool. Plus, I could see that really opening up Steam input because right now it's still kind of this, you know, maligned bastard child that most people hate. 
Like, even if they're using other controllers, like, what is this Steam crap forcing me to do these things with my controller? Like, they don't understand the functionality of it. And that goes straight into number five. Fix, fix the bugs, polish it up, which, I mean, I kind of already addressed that a little bit, but there's so many things with this that after all these years, it still feels like we're beta testing something that they don't know what they're doing with. Polish it up, fix all the annoying little quirks, like, we still have issues where if I put a mode shift click under here on the right pad, and then I make a layer, and then even though that layer will sh would show that there's nothing under the mode shift click, it will still be there, like, a ghost echo, and I have to go in and select right pad click verify that none is selected over here so it like flushes it out because even though it's showing that it's not there it's still there i still have issues with older profiles where i open them up and i try to change haptics on something and it refuses to take the change and i have the only way i can change it is to go into the vdf file if i save a local copy and edit it which is a huge pain in the ass that nobody wants to mess with like things like that Polish it up, get it working. You know, just make it a a more consistent experience, and that would be fantastic. And that would that's five things that I would still like to see from Steam input. Not even necessarily just Steam controller stuff. And yeah, that's pretty much it. That's about uh as close as you'll get from me to an angry rant. Not even I wasn't angry, I was just getting a little bit more animated, which means maybe I sounded like I wasn't in a coma. You know, because usually I just kind of talk like this. And that's really the thing. I mean, you know, people will say I need to edit more. You have no idea how much I edit. And if I don't edit, you would probably call an ambulance because you'd think I was having a stroke or something. Because I just talk. Very, very slowly. I kind of string my sentences together in my mind. You know, before I say them. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's that's me. So, I'm, I'm putting through the extra effort when I'm trying to record. <laughs>